So yeah. American whistle player started very young and yeah. So I started on the pipes, um, and through the inland pipes, I learned that the low whistle existed. And uh, when I when I saw it at the festival, actually, uh, the vendor had them, and I was like, "What are those?" And then it must have been like eleven or twelve. And uh, then I realized, like, I heard I realized I heard the sound before, um, and I loved the sound, but didn't know what it was. And it was like, "Oh, that's that thing." And I think it was probably River Dance or you know Braveheart or something Titanic. But it was like, oh, "That's that sound." And so that was what introduced me to it. And I very quickly found myself gravitating to the low whistle versus the penny whistle. Um, and just playing it with like piping technique and stuff, but you know, pretty early on, I got exposed to Michael McGoldrick's music, you know, and uh, John McSherry's, of course, and then Brian Finnegan, and all the sort of, you know, I feel like some of the like living legends now. And uh, I don't know, I always found it to be, I like love that it has this kind of mysterious sound to it, and it's obviously very different than the pipes. So the pipes have like their own kind of like electricity going on, and if you want something mellower, you know, the whistle is a nice option. Do you have an Irish background? No Irish background. So what took you to the pipes in the first place? Riverdance. That was Riverdance. Oh, Davy Spillane. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I saw that and I was just like, oh my, I don't know, I just, I got obsessed. I was like an obsessive kid. I tried to make my own set of pipes for like a year and then my parents were like, man, this kid probably should get a set of pipes, you know, so I found a practice set somewhere. Um, I was trying to make one of those penny chanters. Did you ever hear about that? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was trying to make one of those, couldn't do it. Not a handy person. Um, so yeah, that was got, got me in the pipes, and then I was lucky because there was a teacher in Michigan, in Detroit, so, um, which, you know, for being in the States, to have someone, like, in an hour drive was, like, pretty incredible. This Dublin guy named Al Purcell, he's amazing. Um, I lived here for a year, um, a couple of years after I started with him, because, well, that's its own story, but I got to live here for a year, and that's when I met John. Okay. So I was 13, and I met him at the Willie Clancy Week, uh, which was the first week I had ever been here. That's, you know, well, that's, that's, a, that's a, a, what do they call it? Uh, something of fire. Yeah. It was, it was like, woo. You know, when I was a kid, I was like, is this Ireland? You know, yeah. like, this is what it's like here. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I met John, like, literally, like, the first three days I was here. And he was, like, my musical hero, you know, at the time. He was, like, my favorite piper. And um, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know anything about him. This was pre, kind of pre internet almost. Like, yeah. it was internet, but it was like, you couldn't like look up John and see a video. I didn't know what he looked like. I didn't know what he, anything about him. Just knew his name and he played the pipes and I loved his playing. Um, amazingly met him when in that first three days and then um, he had just moved to Dublin which is where my family was living. So that year we just sort of hung out a lot and uh, he would show me stuff, but you know, it was much more like hang centered than lesson centered yeah, with John. Yeah, yeah. Maybe more osmosis learning. Um, well, that's John. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was hard to nail him down to like give me yeah. a lesson. Um, so people would be like, you know, like, oh, you guys, you're, like, you're taking lessons with John all the time. He's like, no, mm -hmm. I had like a few lessons with him, but it was just hanging with him. And exactly. Him playing me Nick Drake and Zeppelin, of course. Oh, but, yeah. You know, lots of Zeppelin. Um, but anyway, that was like the kind of like a big brother kind of feeling to it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, it felt like that. And um, But it was encouragement. Oh, oh, he was so encouraging. And I was so, like, stoked to be hanging with him. Yeah. You know, I was just like, oh, my God, this, like, to me, like, this rock star. You know, this, like, Irish music rock star. Yeah. And he was playing cool thing at the time, you know. So he would, he would like, let me to come to the gigs and backstage. And so, you know, I'm just like, wow, you know, incredible. Also, it gives you good grounding in, uh, in what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's, like, a full circle feeling to it. Yeah, yeah so there you were. Cool Finn, John McSherry. Cool Finn, Lunasa. Getting to see all those guys play, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. It was like a very formative year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's a very amazing sort of full circle element to this band where it's like getting to play with John in front of Mike McGoldrick last night, you know, which was like so it's like such an honor for me, you know what I mean, to like be able to be playing music that's obviously very inspired and influenced by McGoldrick exactly. with John, who's obviously like his you know, the peers. And exactly. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's fucking awesome. I'm just like. This is a, such a unique experience for someone to have, you know. I've landed in this interesting position where it's, it's like... And um, you're writing stuff now which is kind of on to another level, which I'm finding quite interesting as a whistle player, uh -huh. that it's, it's you're, you're taking, it's not Irish music, it, you're, yeah. you, you're now developing the instrument, which, I, as I was talking to John earlier, he said 20 years ago, we're taking Irish music to another level with uh -huh. Cool Finn. Yeah. Now you're taking it into a, another level, 20 years later which is now 
it's it's making the whistle an instrument that can do anything. That was I was I've always been excited to see what the whistle can do. You know, um, that's been that's something I've always gravitated towards. I'm like always trying to find like new techniques and new sounds and new things you can get out of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't. It feels funny to be like we're taking it to another level. Like I, I think of it just as like Irish music has this great feeling, right? This beautiful it has a heart. tradition and a heart to it. That's the beauty of, and especially what you're doing. But what I'm seeing you doing is you're incorporating something that gives it more accessibility mm. to a, a, a wider audience. And how from in in just two years of the Olam. Are you seeing a, a, a better response now? People are starting to get yeah, the music. Man, I'll tell you what, it's I never in a million years would have guessed that what we were making, because we made this just as an album originally. It's just yeah. like not a band. It's just like, let's make a record. And uh, the first album, and you know, I thought it was, obviously I liked it. I was part of making it. I thought it was really cool. Because it was all done on the internet, wasn't yeah, it? You just it, sharing files. And... Yeah, yeah, that way, remote, which now post COVID, it's like everything's made that way apparently. But that, but that time it seemed like a strange way to make something. Yeah. But like, I never, it just felt like a very niche, kind of like weird little band, like weird, it seemed like a niche kind of side channel of Irish music where it's like a few people, are, some people are gonna like this, but it's not a mainstream vibe at all. Yeah. And it's just been such a surprise to see, like, there he is, there he is the man in the fridge. <laughs> well, I don't go for the water. It's an interesting, uh, still recovery mode. You have yeah, a you yeah. Have, um, what was it? It's a cold. The cold is yeah, yeah. got a bit of a headache coming on there as well. Oh, no. I'm gonna get, trying to get a headache out. I'll edit yeah. this bit out. It's nothing to do with the fucking drink we did. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. nothing, nothing. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, playing these shows this time and having like, you know, a thousand, more than a thousand people come yeah. singing along to these reels or whatever these tunes are, these tunes in 10 or 5 So people are, people are actually listening to the... Really listening. The music. But like kind of responding as if it's like pop music. Yeah. It's like a pop music response to like a very not pop music music. Never would have seen the, it coming, this, this This is like having the, the doors kicked open, which is what I'm finding as a whistle maker and player. Mm. I'm so glad that there's bands like your band that are actually making it more accessible right. globally mm. because now you've got a global reach through the internet, you know? Right, right, yeah. So... Uh, it's very, the whistle is obviously a very prominent sound it's like that's the lead vocal for us and there's yep. two there's always two exactly so yeah like double, double, and you s and and the other thing i love about it is you sit opposite each other uh, i mean I've, I've watched john and mike sitting facing the audience yeah. for 30 years you two it's almost like a a, a dialogue yeah, yeah and I, actually, I, i'm loving that it's very fun actually just to, to be in that on stage because john and i our goal is to like we're trying to be like i think almost like playing on a razor blade we're trying to be so tight yeah every single thing is exactly the same time and that you actually I'm, i've never done this before i've never faced somebody in a band i'm playing on stage with so this is the first time for me but it's like really cool because it's like we get to actually visually lock in too yeah and the music follows like i can kind of like sick like i feel like i can sink into this channel and pretty soon it's like i feel like i'm moving my fingers exactly at the same time he is in the exact same way the whole show exactly but the visual part is actually integral to that and it's it's interesting as well i mean i've watched john and mike play together for many many years and it always well done <laughs> it's 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 always john holding the tune and mike doing the harmonies now yeah. is that what happens does john hold the tune and you do the harmonies or it tends to be it yeah tends to be. not not always but most a lot of time um that's mike uh, Hi. Yeah, that, there's not not because we agreed on a thing. It's usually like, um, well, honestly, it can come down to like studio. So I have a studio, you know. I own yeah, yeah. I've been a record producer for like the last ten plus years, and so if there's like a we want to change something or want to like you know let's have that be a be a, be a, yeah. be a harmony, I can just do it for free. Just jump in on the harmony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Suppose like John, go book studio time. So like that's kind of how it usually is. It's kind of a yeah. convenience thing, but. Are there, are there any harmonies that John plays? There probably are. We don't harmonize that much, though. No, I've, I've noticed that. We, because try, we, we do it very sparingly. Yeah. We really, I mean, it just feels like a very, like... I like when things feel very focused and very, like, clear. Yeah. And, like, I think that's how you get a distinct sound, is when you don't do everything. You know what I mean? You really limit yourself. Yeah. And 
when you limit yourself, it's like the kick snare, you know, like when you create these limitations, that's when a unique sound is actually born. Exactly. So for me, like it sounds old to me because we're not harmonizing. You know, it's like that's just real, like specific, super tight unison sound. It's yeah. Like, that's the sound. And if you do it enough times, you don't deviate, then it becomes kind of like recognizable, you know? And so that's why we're very sparing with it. It's like, let's stick with this concept. And do you stick mainly with ODs or are you using other keys we use as other well? other keys, yeah, we have some of them. Um, we haven't released some of them, but there's one with low Cs. We got one with low E flats. Um, I play like the, the big A on some stuff. Yeah. The big A. The big A. Is that what you call it? I well, call it's the just the bass A. I the mean, base a. Yeah. Yeah, I've base got a bass A. I mean, yeah. I can. It's 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 a it's a mother to play, yeah, but it's yeah, such a cool sound. It is. Yeah. Some, there's some uh, big A. There's F. I play a G on one of the tunes. But you don't play high Ds now. Why? No high Ds. Yeah, Nobody yeah. plays high Ds. I don't know. It's it's such a it's such a sound, you know. I but, don't think I think so the Olam for me the Olam is all about like the musical colors yeah like, within the like, altos and the, and the tenors it's, it's just the whole music is purpley dark red yeah. maroon yeah, like, that's even. the zone that's yeah. the, and high D's are just like bright yellow and, yeah. you know it's like yeah. that's not what our sound is you know I love that sound but again focusing it's like what do we do it's yeah. like we do this kind of vibey sultry mysterious big kind of narrative type stuff you know like these specific parameters yeah and I mean maybe someday we do a high D scene I th it just doesn't feel like the color yeah you have to have the music f wait a minute we played high D's on the new record ah. very subtly the background part okay we broke our rule <laughs> just, we break our rules sometimes which is like it's only me and John we don't double we, you know what I mean it's like just the two whistles at all times yeah but on one of the second track of the new record we broke our rule and we have two high D's very far in the background like okay. a little like background line because the, for every one low whistle player there's about a hundred high whistle players totally. and this is something I mean I'm not a high whistle player yeah, me neither. but I I do I, I love C mm -hmm. and I love B natural yeah uh, I will send you a B natural whistle I don't have one so you have to give me your address again. Again, it's a different address. <laughs> and I'll send it's not my you. Address anyway. I, I will send you a B natural, oh, and B awesome. natural is because when you push it into the height, it's not shrill. Yeah, it's still got that lovely soft. Yeah, the rounded feeling to it. But B natural is a lovely, lovely key. Isn't that so, cool how each key has its own it does, feeling yeah. to it? I know. It's not B flat. Nope. It's not C. It's yeah, yeah. just in there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I would love to have a B. And I'll send John one as well. So. Hey, well, that's, that's a great way to get one. On, on a record, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, we, I mean, it's cool. I wouldn't. I don't think of. I didn't have an E flat for a while. I mean, there was a tune that John we played on the D's for a long time for years, and John was like, "I think this should be better on E flats," you know. And it just really changed it, you know, like bringing up that half key. It's like a absolutely. Whole other zone, yeah. You, know? you mean a, a, a tenor E flat? Yeah. Tenor yeah. E flat. I yeah, love yeah. tenor E flats. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's that half step makes a huge difference. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, um, well. Where's it going from here? You're on a tour at the moment. Yeah. You've got another two or three nights in the UK. Is that it? That's it for this tour. Um, this tour has gone better than I think any of us were hoping for in terms of like response and buzz and all that stuff. So it seems like there's some momentum now. So what is next? I don't know. People are, but people are talking about stuff. I'm hearing a lot of ideas. Um, there is definitely some new music coming out. Okay. Um, and one of the tracks is going to be with a... Oh, nice. Our Sammy's. Um, food. There's a track with a... The man with the food. The man with the food. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, I can't say the name of the artist, but we have a collaboration coming out with a very uh, prominent pop artist. Oh, okay. Not a singer, but a, like a pop producer. Okay, yeah. Electronic DJ kind of producer person. Like a Vici or something like that. Yeah. But it's not that person so we have a collab coming out with, with him in yeah. January which is which is nice because it's a crossover it's, it's again accessibility yes. Br bring, bringing these yeah, into a bigger a bigger bigger realm pipes which, and whistles are on the track pipes and whistles and it's, not, and it's not a thing where we're playing background parts we wrote tunes and he produced a track around the tunes oh wonderful so it's very like the tune is very prominent yeah um which is just it's a bizarre and hilarious kind of cool thing you know? well it's, I think I think it's uh, everybody will respond to a whistle you can stand in the street and play a penny whistle yeah. and people their, their ears prick up and go yeah. oh 
that's a tune. So yeah. uh, bring it on. Bring it on. That's exactly. all I can say. Bring it on. So there's more stuff coming. We're gonna more do some stuff. stuff with singers and you know, obviously different time signatures will probably be on the on the palette. Indeed. Well, I'm loving the ten now. eights. I love the, the ten, ten eights. Cool. Yeah, cool very cool. You don't want to do too much of it. You know? No, no, but, but it's, two tunes with like a different... it's nice to break out of the mold. Yeah. You know, you know, you've got your slip jigs, your reels, and yeah. your, your whatever. But gee, yeah. you know, uh, it's nice to do because it's 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 pushing the instrument, it's pushing pushing the player, yeah. and it's also giving uh, people who are listening to it, it's bending their ears a bit, which is I think the most important thing. And the young people, that's the other thing. Young, more and more young people yeah. are coming to the whistle, yeah. and also more and more old people are coming to the whistle, which is what I found yeah, is this becoming. You know, That's it's great. it's a multi generational yeah, instrument yeah, yeah. like the ukulele. Yeah, hey, hey. <laughs> nice. Anyway, nice. Tyler, thanks very much. Yeah, it's been my great, pleasure, man. and I'm looking forward to seeing the gig. Yes. And um, you will see on the back of this interview, you will see some of the gig tonight. So, hey, cheers. Hey.